Here you go guys, this is what you've all been waiting for. Coyotes Classics first Pinto for sale. I've been in business for 15 years, never thought I'd ever own a Pinto, but I seen this one and we just had to have it and uh, put it for sale so someone else can own it. The thing I've been wondering is why did you just have to have it? I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. But I'll tell you what, the coolest damn part about this Pinto and like me and Dalton said before in our walk around video, I knew I was gonna catch a little hell for buying this Pinto, but the paint is so gorgeous on it, and where in the hell do you ever find one? You don't. I mean, where do you see a Pinto runabout? <laughs> Besides that Coyote Classic. The only time I've ever heard of a Pinto was in high school business class. We were learning about ethics, and they were talking to us about how Ford was unethical with the Pinto. Why were they unethical? Because they should have stopped production, they said. They just kept blowing up and killing people. <laughs> But this one won't blow up. How do you know? I don't know, but it shouldn't. Anyway, so what Dee was saying, uh, if you read a little history, what happened with the Pinto was, you know, they didn't have a lot of room here in the back. So what happened with a, a rear end, um, a bad rear end on this thing um, would uh, set the gas tank on fire is what they're saying. But. So what was the deal? Ford was supposed to recall them or they were well, just paying people they off figured on them? It was a lot cheaper, more cost effective to just pay off lawsuits when people died in the Pinot than it was to recall all the, the Pinots they made and, and remanufacture them. So I'm not sure if this is the exploding Pinto. What years they were, you don't know what years they were. But, but the cool thing is one of our, we made a comment, one of our uh, YouTuber if you listen followers closely, here. If you listen closely, you can hear it Ross. Is that what he said? Yep. Okay. Anyway, so with that being said, that's probably why there's not a lot of pinos around, guys. Um, they rusted out, they were kind of a cheaper car back in the day, but whoever the hell owned this car did a great job preserving it and then also restoring it. Yeah. I mean, gorgeous colors. It's a, um, a gold metallic with a two-tone blue metallic and they did a beautiful job in the doors and everything. So enough talking about the pinot, we're gonna show it to you. Underneath the hood, we got the four-cylinder with a four-speed manual transmission. It's got the headers, we put a brand new Napa battery. We also just put a brand new starter in it, Dave, and a starter relay. So all that stuff is completely done. Um, it's got an electric fan up front. And uh, check out the paint quality on the bottom side of the hood. Yeah, it's a really nice car. Yeah, it is. It's, pretty, yeah, cool. it's a cool car. So I literally have never rode in one or uh, even seen one before uh, we got this one here. So as we go to the front, we're just gonna talk about the condition just a little bit here. Um, the grill is fantastic. So the grill doesn't have any pieces busted or chipped on it, but I can see the front and rear bumpers are both original and uh, could use to be re-chrome. There's a couple little dings and some scratches in the bumpers. That dark blue metallic paint though is awesome. It you is can pretty. tell it's a few years old. You got a few little, yeah, that's just a buffering compound here. Uh, Timmy buffed the hood out a little bit. We had just a few little water spots, stuff like that. But a little few scratches. Um, a few scratches. Yep. A couple light, very light scratch kind right of, through here. Yeah. But uh, as jokingly as this is, as far as gaps on a pinno, you know, look at these. Really nice, even gaps from front to back. Hood lines up great to the back of the top of the fenders back here. The coolest part about this car, guys, when we got it in, me and Dalt took it to the gas station, and you cannot freaking believe the people that came up to us and said, you know, thought it was just the neatest thing ever. It's crazy. I mean, we drive a lot of high dollar, cool muscle cars, and uh, we don't get that much attention with those, but everyone was sw uh, swarming around this panel. All right, so the, the Restore did a really nice job on the two-tone stripe for this runabout as it goes right along here on the body line. Comes up right around back here. Kind of a little ding, tiny little ding right here. As far as the uh, roof goes, I don't see any waves, any chips, dings, nothing like that, super clean. I love the paint color on this car too. The metallic looks fantastic. Our door gap looks good, just a little bit tighter in the bottom than it is in the top, but nice clearance. Same thing with rocker panels, guys. The rocker panel is super solid on it. Lower fender is perfect. Body line lines up really nicely. Bottom of the doors are great. There's no bubbles or blisters there. I mean, this is a 
super solid car. Like you said, Dalton pointed out here, we got just a little bit of a ding here. Very small, let's look up and down the side. It's got tinted glass in the back. The emblems are all in excellent shape. And with this car, you almost don't even need a lift. You get three guys, y'all can pick it up and work on it. Honestly, it's so light, you can pick it up. You don't need a lift. That's, That's a solid point. Absolutely. Look how nice the body is. As far as straightness on this body, it's in excellent shape. Um, tires and rims are kind of a good choice. We've got single exhaust coming out the back. Rear balance is in great shape. Around the back window is in excellent shape. Again, we have a uh, tinted glass on there. It does have the fold down rear seat. As we look at the door handles, our door handles here are pitted. As we go into the interior, um, they painted the door jams beautifully body color inside of the doors. Corners of the doors all look good. And this just was not a rusty car. Yeah. They started with a really, really good sanitary car. They did a great job in here, just burying the jams and paint in here and behind the lower fenders all done nice. They came inside here and painted the column and around the glove box and all that kind of stuff. Inside the glove box, it's got the, uh, looks like the flash refuse in here. Glove box inserts there. It is a four speed, which is kind of nice. It carries great oil pressure. It's been running here for a couple of minutes. Uh, temperature's running about 160, oil pressure is 55. Um, the horn doesn't work. The gas gauge and speedometer do work. It's got 43,571 miles. Dash pad has got uh, one little crack that's been repaired years ago. <laughs> when you push down the car, it just shook, man. <laughs> this thing is a light car. Um, the headrests and stuff are in fantastic shape. The seats are great. Don't ask me if they're the original seats. I've never seen a Pinot before, but they do match the back really well, don't they? They almost look like they're too far advanced, like for too the year, but cool for... yeah. But they match excellent in the same bolster in the front and back. Too. Oh wow, cool. That's great. Yeah. Headliner's in fantastic shape. The back hatch stays open beautifully. If you look at our pictures, coyoteclassics.com, um, you'll be able to see the inside of the trunk and everything. Back door panels are fine. Front door panels are good. We've got seat belts in the front, seat belts in the rear. I know damn near as big as that gator right there. It ain't much bigger than the gator. Grandma would want the gator or the pinot or not, straight in the gator. I don't know, maybe. Um, as far as this color really looks nice out in the sun though. Doesn't it? Um, we do have a few little paint imperfections down here. There's two scratches, one here and here. Right there. One there. And a couple of tiny little bubbles right there, very small. Tires look like they're in great shape, 195, 70, 13s. Over the wheel well, behind the quarter is great. Paint looks awesome. Rocker, bottom of the door is all in great shape. It's a really good car. It's nice. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, a lot of the chrome and stuff like this, guys, has just a lot of little scratches on that chrome. Doors open easy. Like I said, the paint, the metallic and stuff on the inner door jams, paint's just as nice as the rest of the car. Now this Dalton is definitely not one we want to try to outrun the cops in. There is no chance in hell we could even outrun them in town I with the pin on. So. <laughs> True. Um, as far as our door jam paint goes, really, really nice. All the way through. All right, let's take it for a spin. <coughs> so, our wipers work. Gas gauge works, speedometer works. Where, Jesus. Yeah, right? Seat goes back, yeah. Yeah, seat does recline way back. <laughs> Heater fan think, doesn't work, guys. I think on that movie, The Incredibles, Mr. Incredible had a Pinto. Remember that tiny little car he no, had? No shit, I yeah, think he it did. was. Yeah, it he was. Did. How the hell did he fit in there? I don't know, that's kind of what I feel like right now. <laughs> you feel like, <laughs> like Mr. Incredible. Oh, Jesus. Alright, so our wipers work, we already talked about the horn doesn't work, um, gauges work on it. It's 
got a Pioneer CD player, non-working. Here we go, man. You ready? I'm excited. Why don't you really want to know? Yeah. So everyone else can hear your excitement. <laughs> This is a cool, I mean, like it or not, this is a freaking piece of automotive American history, though. Seriously. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, all jokes aside, this damn thing, like I said, it gets more looks than a lot of the other cars we've had. Oh, yeah. Listen to her. Oh, boy. I need to learn how to shift the Pinto. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's got a wide ratio. Yeah. I mean, just look at this. So, as far as the four speed goes, it's just a wide ratio four speed. She ain't no race car. Oh, she definitely no race car. Thank, She's thank a God, about. Thank God Tim's not sitting there. Tim the cop ain't sitting there anymore. <laughs> oh my God! No way! It chirped though. I did not. In the second gear, the pedal chirp tired. I don't believe it. Dude. <laughs> Your excitement was, I think, that's probably the most excited I've ever seen when you chirp tired. <laughs> I can't believe it. Try to stop Seriously, it. Seriously, the other day, no. The other day we took this thing out, and I didn't know if we'd get over 60 with her, but she's really going now. She was going about 65 mile an hour right there. Jeez. Anyway, so, guys, temperature gauge works. It runs and drives really nice. If you're into a Pinto, this is a, a great car. If you're not into them, please refrain from saying a shitload of negative remarks on our YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> don't make fun of it, Pinto. It's a All good right. car. We like it. You'll like it too. Yeah. Don't Just make fun of it. Don't, care. don't make fun of it, I guess. Um, let's talk about our brakes a little bit. Look at this. Brakes are perfect. Idle's perfect. <laughs> Alright, check out the Pinto, coyoteclassics.com. Check it out. Like Chad oh. said, don't make fun of it. It's a nice car and uh, someone's really gonna enjoy it.